Hello, welcome to lesson 1.06, adding and multiplying polynomials. Um, yes, there are a lot of vocabularies to cover in this lesson. However, uh, you know, I suggest you pause the video and read it on your own. Okay. Um, yep, that's how we're going to be. Okay. But when we go into example problem, you'll be able to actually see if you truly understood the definition. So let's take a look at example one. Consider the expression 2x squared plus 3x minus 7 minus 1 half x to the third. A, rewrite the expression so that it is in standard form. Let's take a look at what standard form means, standard form of polynomial. The arrangement of polynomial where all the like terms are combined and each term is in descending order of the exponent. So in other words, what this means is from highest to lowest exponent. Okay. So if you take a look at this example, first and foremost, I have one, two, three, four terms. And if you look at the exponents, the highest exponent is x to the third. So if we were to rewrite this expression in standard form, we're going to first write negative 1 half x to the third. That's first. Next highest exponent is positive 2x squared. And of course, next one. Now here, technically, you write both terms don't have exponents. However, actually, scholars, if you look at 3x, x does have an exponent. If exponent is not written to the variable, but variable is written out, that means there is an invisible 1. So we are going to write 3x to the first power first, and then negative 7 without the exponent, right? Actually, it doesn't even have the variable. Okie dokes, let's talk about the following aspects of this expression. Number of terms, we did just say that there are four terms. Uh, a quick way to visualize how many terms there are is by looking at how the pluses and the minuses separate. Okay, so for example here, automatically I'm seeing there's this thing in between the pluses and minuses, this thing, this thing, and this thing. So there are four terms in this expression. Degree. What the heck is degree? Degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. So if you look, what's the degree of this expression? 3. Because 3 is the highest exponent. Leading term. Let me take a look. Leading term. The term of the polynomial with greatest degree. So term, remember, is this whole thing. Right? Highest degree is 3, so we're talking about this whole thing. So leading term is negative 1 half x to the third. And then, of course, leading coefficient, leading coefficient is the coefficient of the leading term. Well, what is coefficient? Let's take a look. A quantity placed next to the variable and multiplying the variable. So if we look here, again, leading, so we have to look at our leading term. Coefficient is basically the number that's getting multiplied by the variable. So if I peep up, peep right here, negative half times x, that's the variable. So leading coefficient is negative one half. Constant, let's take a look at what constant is. Constant is a quantity that is a number on its own. Constant is the number without the variable. So here, let me check, variable, 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 ah, here we go. And it is negative seven scholars, okay? Please don't forget the negative. Now, name of the polynomial, um, if we peep over here, there are special names for polynomials, okay? And usually this is depending on how many terms there are, okay? So if there's only one term, that means it's a monomial, monomial, okay? And then two terms, you know, bi, bicycle, two wheels, okay? Binomial. If there are three terms, trinomial. 
And then if there's more than three, then we're just going to call it polynomial. Okay, so this is a polynomial. And actually, if you want to be a little bit more fancy, we can also use the degree vocab. All right. Now, degree, remember, is the highest exponent. So in this case, the highest exponent was three, right? So we can actually call this expression a cubic polynomial. All right. All right, let's take a look at C. Are there any like terms? Why or why not? Well, let's take a look at what the like terms are. Like terms, terms that have the same variables raised to the same powers. So if we look here, they all have x's, well, except for this one. But then like terms have same variables and same exponents, right? So if you look, none of them got the same exponents, okay? So we're going to say no, because none of them, none of the terms have the same exponent, okay? And I don't want to spell out exponent, so here you go. All right, so a little bit of vocabulary review. Let's take a look at our mini lesson one, adding polynomials. Example two, perform the operations and write the final answer in standard form. Okay, scholars, super duper important. Um, when you do operations with polynomials, you want to first ask yourself, okay, what is the operation? So if you look at this, right, I see a trinomial, three terms, adding to another trinomial. You feel me? So since we're adding, we're just combining like terms. Okay, so if you don't remember how to combine like terms, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and label the like terms. So this is x squared, right? So this one is also x squared, so I'm going to circle it. And then negative 7x, single x, I'm going to go ahead and put a little underline. And then positive 5x, I'm going to put an underline. And then lastly, I'm going to put a square on negative 5, just a constant, negative 3, just a constant. So we are combining, so we're adding these two together, okay? So here, stay with me. 3x squared plus 2x squared. I have 3x squares and then 2x squared. How many x squares I got in total? 5x squared. Stay with me. Negative 7x plus 5x. A quick way to add and subtract numbers is, first of all, look at them, different signs. So different signs means the next term, the result when I add them up, is going to follow the bigger numbers sign. 7 is bigger, so it's going to be negative. And then, yo, what's the difference between 7 and 5? 2, right? If I add 2 to 5, I'm going to get 7. So you just write down the difference. And of course, we keep the x. Okay. So notice, when we combine like terms, the variable and the exponent, they stay the same. We only add the coefficients. All right, last one, negative 5 plus negative 3. Think about it. I owe somebody 5 bucks. I borrow 3 more. Total, I owe them 8 bucks. Next one. Ooh, look. What's the operation in question here? Subtraction, right? I'm subtracting this trinomial from here. So actually, when we subtract... We're going to first apply this negative to each of the terms that's getting subtracted. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it. Negative positive turns negative. Negative negative turns positive. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and identify the like terms. And then I'm going to combine them. So when we subtract, once again, you must distribute the negative, okay? All right, so then 3x squared minus 2x squared. Remember, it follows the larger number sign, so this is positive, positive. 3 minus 2 is basically 1x squared. You don't have to write 1 if you don't want to, that's fine. Negative 7 minus 5, again, the signs are the same. So negative 7, just count it up, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 negative 12x, negative 5 plus 3. I owe somebody 5 bucks. I pay back 3. I owe them still $2. Okay. 
All right, let's go on to the next. Multiplying polynomials. All right, this time we are multiplying. Okay, so operation is a little bit different, uh, but we're just going to keep it the same. Ready? So um, let's take a look, tackle this one, right? This one looks mad nasty, but actually you're, you can totally handle this. I'm going to write out everything that's getting multiplied. A to the third means I'm multiplying A three times by itself. I still multiply by B. Now I'm multiplying by A once again. B twice, right? That's what squared means. And of course, I'm multiplying by X, right? So here, we're all multiplying these stuff all together. Numbers. Focus on numbers first. Negative 8. That's it. Everything else has the coefficient of 1. Yes, it's not written, but you know that's there. So it's negative 8. And then we're going to count up how many times A getting multiplied by itself. So let's count it up. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to write it as A to the fourth. B. Guess what? How many times am I multiplying B by itself? Three times. Okay? And then X, X is just going to chill by itself like that. Okay? Done. B. All right. It's getting a little bit trickier. I'm going to make a mistake right here, and I hope you figure out what the problem is. Oh, I see the square, so I'm going to distribute it. Orthman, I got you. No, that's wrong. You cannot distribute the square across the addition, across the binomial. Okay? So we actually do have to write this out. Okay, let's write it out what this means. So I still have 10, but then when I square x plus 4, that means I'm multiplying x plus 4 by itself twice. All right. So here, we had everything that's getting multiplied. Everything was just multiplication. But notice here, now I have different terms. I have a binomial times binomial. So that's when we're going to do box method. Now, I know some of you learned FOIL, so you might just hear that, okay, I multiply these two together, and then I multiply these together, write it all out, and then add them up. That's fine if that's what you want to do, okay? But I like box method because it helps me organize my work, okay? Sometimes I lose track of what's what. So since this is two terms, binomial times binomial, I'm going to write two by two boxes. Write down what I'm multiplying by. So x plus 4 right here. x and then plus 4 right here. And then we start multiplying. To fill in this box, I'm going to do x times x. x times x is not 2x. x squared, right? Because think about it. x times x. x times x. I'm multiplying x by itself twice. This is how we write it. So x times x is, remember, x squared. And x plus x, be careful, is 2x. Okay, so please, please don't trip this up. All right, 4x, I'm sorry, 4 times x, 4x, x times 4. Okay, because think about where this box is, right? It lines up with this x, lines up with 4, x times 4, 4x. This box... 4 times 4, 16. And now, once we are almost done with the box method, once we fill in the boxes, we have to actually add the like terms. Okay? Look at it. 4x and 4x. Yo, they like terms. I'm going to add them. Okay? So we can write it out in standard form. x squared, 4x plus 4x. I have total of 8x. And I've got 16. Right? But we ain't done yet. Because if you look over here, right, I got to square this x plus 4, then I'm going to multiply by 10. You get me? And we just squared it. So this times 10 is still there in front of us. We still have to take care of it. Now, for this one, it's one term times three terms. So this one, we're just going to distribute. Okay, I'm not going to set up box method. 
10 times x squared is 10x squared. 10 times 8x is 80x. 10 times 16 is 160. Okay, and that would be my final answer. And it's beautiful. It's in standard form. We good. All right, C. Okay. First of all, again, look at this. Try to think of, see the larger picture. What operation am I doing with a binomial, two terms, and this trinomial? What's the operation between those two expressions? Multiplication. So when we multiply by multiple terms, we're going to set up the box method. Okay? Now you can do, here, I like going horizontally longer, so I just decided to put the three terms over here on the top. But if you want to reorient it, so like this, let me just write it here. If you want to write it like this, that's fine as well. Okay, so you want to write x plus 2 first right here, and then do x squared plus 5x minus 6. That's totally cool. Okay, but I just like it looking at it horizontally. Okay, that's how I like it. That's how I like to roll. All right, so why don't you pause the video and then fill in those boxes and then see if you can combine like terms and arrive at the final answer. x squared times x, I'm multiplying x by itself three times, right? One, two, three. 5x times x, 5x squared. Negative 6 times x, negative 6x. X squared times 2, 2x squared. 5x times 2, 5 times 2 is 10, I still have that single x. Negative 6 times 2, negative 12. All right, remember, diagonals usually are the like terms. Not always, so I need to combine them, okay? So I like to just combine them straight up and then write my final answer. So my final answer would be x to the third plus, you know, what is 2 plus 5? 7x squared. Remember, we are adding them, so when we add the terms, we only combine the numbers keep the variables the same, right? 10 minus 6, 4, and then x, and of course, negative 12. So this is our final insert.